FIFA 17, it's finally here, and every single person, dog, and his nan wants some coins. Well, make sure to head over to goldad.com right now and use Gone for checkout for the cheapest coins on the market. Yo! What's going on, lads? Today, we have got some transfer gossip. Yeah, I know half of you are sitting there already going, Gone, we're in November, and already. You're bringing us transfer gossip. But yo, seriously, when you see some of the news that I've got to bring for you today, I've got a full team of transferred players that could be moving in January, and there's gonna be some It's gonna blow your head off. Blow your head, clean, clean off. I wanna thank one of my good friends, Rossi HD. He inspired me to make today's video. He's got a shitload of transfer news over on his channel, so I'll leave a link to him in the description. Go and check him out, because if it wasn't him, inspiring me to make today's video, you wouldn't be seeing it. But like I said, lads, today I have built a full squad, a full 11 player transfer squad, and starting us off in goal, it's gonna be Fiat Back Courtois. Now this guy, one of the best keepers in the world, is linked, unfortunately for you Chelsea fans, to Real Madrid. As you can see, lads, I've got a little new section from the Telegraph, I think, claiming the Chelsea star discusses a move to Real Madrid. Now, everybody knows when Real Madrid wants a player, they get the player. Now, he has also come out and said that he's happy at Chelsea at the present moment, but whenever Real Madrid come in your ear, they're like a fit girl in a strip club. When they start nibbling on your ear, no matter how much you fight the temptation, you're gone. You're spending racks. You are done. Next up, we've got one of my ex favorite players in the Premier League of all time, Yaya Torre. This guy had songs made about it. This guy was one of the top scoring midfielders back in 2012. This guy was an idol for any player coming up. Watching Yaya Torre play was just heaven. What the fuck happened? I ain't seen this guy play once this season. There was times when he was doing things like this. And now, unfortunately, he can't even get on the pitch. According to the papers, Guardiola actually came out and said that Yaya Torre can join any team that he fancies. He can fuck off to Man United if he wants. He can go to Chelsea. He can go anywhere. He doesn't care unless Yaya Torre's agent personally apologizes to him and the club for the comments that he made. I don't know what sort of agent Yaya Torre's got going on, but he's stopping him from playing games. Surely, that's a bad agent. And from Yaya Torre to Steven Gerrard, two of the Premier League's best midfielders. Gerrard is actually considering a move back to the Premier League. He's got teams like West Ham, a move back to Liverpool apparently, and even Celtic, all knocking on the door. Now apparently he's also come out and said that he could just retire and he's unsure of his future. But it would be interesting to see a move back to the Premier League for Gerrard, or would he just be tarnishing his career? I mean, just sometimes you've just got to let it go. You're getting old, mate. Just, just let it go. And from a Premier League legend to a Premier League bad boy, how much shit have this guy caused in his whole life? I mean, what the fuck has he been doing wrong? Who actually goes and does this? And his behaviour just like that when he was playing for QPR that has also got him sacked from Rangers, yet they've terminated his contract. He no longer plays for Rangers, but stupidly, as some might say, Aston Villa wanna sign him. But Aston Villa and Burnley are both chasing for this guy's signature in January, which, in my opinion, is crazy. If he's not fighting, biting, swearing, having a bust up with a manager, having fights with his own teammates, I don't know what this guy is doing. On the pitch, he's a decent footballer. Off the pitch, He's a nutcase. But then moving up to the midfield, we've got a juicy one. Cesc Fabregas. Now, what the fuck ever happened to you, bro? Back in your Arsenal days, you were an absolute legend. You were a saint, you did no wrong. But it's players like Fabregas, Nasri, Adebayor, who else have we got? Van Persie, they seem to have left, and they just never, ever, ever got back to the level they were at when they were playing for Arsenal. I mean, who remembers when Cesc Fabregas did this against Tottenham. That's right, he actually ran from 
from the halfway line on his own and scored the solo goal. When have you seen this guy do that for Chelsea? Because I ain't seen him really do anything good at all. According to the Independent, as you can see here, West Ham want Fabregas. Now, it must be pretty demoralising going from winning the league with Arsenal, winning the league with Chelsea, and then all of a sudden, West Ham won you. Take nothing away, West Ham are a great team, but they're no Arsenal and they're no Chelsea. But unfortunately for Fabregas, according to most news outlets, this guy is definitely going to be leaving Stamford Bridge in January. And next to Fabregas, we're going with Javier Pastore. And this guy definitely is on the come up and he's looking for a move to the Premier League. Now, of course, if Fabregas moves in January, that would make sense for them to be coming in for Pastore. Because they're looking for a move. They're looking for a swoop. They're looking to take this guy and make him their own. Apparently Conte actually wanted him in the summer, but he's going to have to wait until January to make another move. But if Chelsea won the Argentine midfielder, they could be looking to pay up to 40 mil plus. This guy ain't coming cheap. Next up we've got Olivier Giroud. Now me being an Arsenal fan, this is a bit of a weird one, because this guy has always really pissed me off. And he's never unpissed me off, because he's never done that good. And him being at the club, is he's just done just good enough to stop Arsene Wenger from going and getting someone better, which has always pissed me off. Everyone who supports Arsenal knows Giroud was just never good enough. I think he knows that himself. He's decent, but he was never good enough. But because he'd do a moment every now and then and score a few goals every now and then, it'd make Arsene Wenger think that maybe he is good enough, because Arsene Wenger's stingy. So for the last six or seven years, we've stuck with Giroud. But now, Giroud wants out. According to the papers, Giroud is unhappy and is about to leave when his contract runs out. Now that will be interesting, because I'm not sure who's gonna want you. His contract actually does run out at the end of next season, and apparently he is extremely unhappy sitting on the bench. But like I said, that one definitely will be interesting to see who comes and swoops him. Because I doubt he's gonna get anything better than Arsenal. And over on the right, we've got Romelu Lukaku. Now this is 100% one of the weirdest things I have ever witnessed in transfer news history. Now Everton boss Ronald Coleman has actually come out and said he thinks Lukaku should leave if he wants to turn into a better player. Now I think every single person in the world knows that. But if you're Everton boss, surely you shouldn't be telling your best players they should leave if they want to get better. Me as an Arsenal fan, I know that. Everyone knows Lukaku should be at a top team. He's a top player, he's young, he's strong, he's got everything that a top striker should have. But you Everton fans should be absolute loving every last minute that you get with him. You shouldn't want your manager surely to be telling him to leave. Because eventually then he's going to think, do you know what? Everyone's telling me I should leave, even my own manager. Maybe I should just fuck off. Now, like I said, I could be being an idiot. That could be good managerial skills. I don't know. But in my world, sometimes you should just lie to protect your players. And this is one where if I was the Everton owner and my manager was telling my top player to leave to become a better player, he'd be getting a clip round the old ear. And I'm finally moving on to three big boys that you're all going to be definitely interested in. We've got Aubameyang, Griezmann and Mandzukic. Three top, top players, top, top strikers, the top, top teams want. We're going to start off with Mario Mandzukic. Now, this guy is an absolute nuisance. He had a season at Bayern Munich where he scored 48 goals in 88 games and had 14 assists. Now, if that doesn't scream goal machine, I don't know what does. Now, this afternoon, I've been reading a whole lot of news about Mandzukic, but what has come in recently, in the last day or two, the Tottenham are looking to make a bid in January. Apparently, Arsenal were looking for a move for him, and he was looking to move to China. Like, China are raving guys. They come in with, like, 70, 80 mil. They overpay by about 30 mil for players, and if they want you, they can sometimes have you. I mean, can you imagine? You're just sat on the bench doing nothing. Yeah, you're on 60, 70 grand a month, and then all of a sudden, some mad Chinese club comes in. They're chopping up kittens and cats and feeding them to you for tea, but they're coming in with 70 mil, offering to pay you 600 grand a week. And all you've got to do is eat cats. And moving from Mandzukic to Pierre-Eric Aubameyang, possibly the most deadliest striker in world football. One of the fastest, one of the most scariest. This guy can do almost anything on the ball. This dude scored 40 goals last season in all competitions, and is on 14 already this season. He's an absolute menace. Now, of course, when you're scoring that many goals and you're being that much of a nuisance, you're going to attract top top teams like Man City and Chelsea. And I'll be honest, if I was playing at Dortmund, I've already been there for the last three years, 
and one of these big teams came knocking, offering more money and a first team spot, I'd be strongly tempted, no, in fact, I'd be packing my bags and I'd be flying off to England today. Do you know what, fuck it, I'm gone. I think every single football fan, apart from Dortmund fans, would love to see Aubameyang in the Premier League at some point this season. That would just be nuts. And then finally, to complete the team, we've got Anton Griezmann, one of the top strikers in the whole world. Top five, in my opinion, this guy, is just incredible. He can do it at international level, he can do it at club level. He's young and he just he can score every type of goal. And what I mean by every type of goal is this, for example. In a competition con solo 28 puntos. Un Atlético de Madrid que iba a marcar muy pronto. No, 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 come on. This, this guy is a monster. He's about this big. And he's doing all sorts. But all jokes aside, lads, Man United are looking to splash big. Again, apparently this move, if it comes off successful and Griezmann actually does agree to move, could break Paul Pogba. The Paul Pogba record. The Pogba bullshit. Wow. To see some of these players like Aubameyang, Griezmann, Mandzukic, or in the Premier League next season, or even in the Premier League this season, would be absolutely mind-blowing. But there we have it, lads. There's all your transfers gossip for now. If you have enjoyed today's video and want to see more transfers news of any kind, leave this a thumbs up. I much appreciate it. If there's anything I've missed or you lot want to get involved, because I know you're all going to tell me a load of stuff that I've got wrong, and a load of reviews that I'm an idiot, so go down below and leave a comment right now, because... I will be reading them. But as usual, I really hope you've enjoyed and I will speak to you all next time. Peace. Oh, oh, my man, my God. Holy shit. Cool. Oh. Okay. Yes, lads. That's